All right, all right, everybody. It is lab number 16, the last lecture. Get excited. Okay, that's too excited, calm down. Let's start by talking about the first member of our genus, genus Homo. The first species, as you know, is Homo habilis. Handyman, the same body size as an Australopithecus, but its brain size has increased by 50%. No longer does it have a chimpanzee-sized brain, even though it's the same size as a chimpanzee. These guys also get smaller teeth, and this is due to its adaptation to eating things like meat, much softer than the hard fibrous foods that the paranthropines or australopithecines were eating. So as a function of having much smaller teeth, their faces get less prognathic. On the left, there's an australopithecus like Lucy. Notice that projecting face, Homo habilis, much less prognathic. But they retain the weird, very primitive characteristics of Australopithecus, like the long arms, just as long as a chimpanzee, the small body, three and a half, four feet tall, and even the fingers and toes are still curved, and that signifies an arboreal adaptation. So this is a very enigmatic species that has a lot of primitive features, but a couple of very important derived features like the smaller teeth and the bigger brain. This was a very successful species and would give rise to an even larger brain descendant, Homo erectus. Not a person yet, but getting a little bit closer because now the shoulders are no longer shrugged, the arms no longer reach down to their knees, the legs are long, these guys are traveling long distances, running marathons essentially, and this is the first hominin with human limb proportions. No longer do they look like apes. In fact, they stand much, much taller. These guys are anywhere between five and six feet tall by the end of their evolutionary tenure. Their brain gets even bigger, not quite as big as a human brain, but about one third smaller bigger than a Homo habilis. But you'll also notice they're still not looking human in terms of skull shape. Look at how long that brain is and low the forehead is, and that brow ridge is crazy. The long, low brain case, the ridiculous brow ridge above the eyes, those are ape-like characteristics. In addition, they have something called post-orbital constriction. I will ask you this on your quiz. What do we call it when the skull narrows or tapers behind the eye sockets? We call that post-orbital, post means behind, post-orbital constriction. The frontal lobe of their brain is very ape-like in terms of its proportion. So while they have a big brain, much larger than any ape, it's still shaped like a chimpanzee head. A lot of evolution in store for these guys. And if you look at their skull from behind, here's the occipital bone, you'll notice the widest point of the skull on Homo erectus is low down. It's even below the ears, and this is basically a chimpanzee-like characteristic. Very primitive. Compare that to Homo heidelbergensis, who's got that rounder skull. It bulges out towards the side. Neanderthals have a bowling ball for a head, very large brains, but it's widest in the middle. Your brain bulges up, up, and away like a light bulb, but look at Homo erectus, looking like a pinhead. It's almost like a point on the top of the skull. Talk about that in a second, but the widest point is very low on a Homo erectus skull. Despite its big brain, the skull looks like a chimp. That point on top of the skull has a special name, and don't confuse it with a sagittal crest. This is not a crest of bone, it's kind of a keel. We call this a sagittal keel. Here's a cross section of a Homo erectus skull, and you can see it kind of comes to a point, not a crest where muscles are gonna attach, but just the shape of a skull that reinforces it and buttresses it against any type of trauma. Compare that to your skull, which is very round, very thin. These guys had a sagittal keel. The sagittal keel. Keep an eye out for that on your quiz. You know what a keel is? It's that wedge on the bottom of a boat. Here is a sagittal keel on a Homo erectus skull. You can see running down the sagittal midline, distinctive characteristic of a Homo erectus. Homo erectus was very successful. In fact, this was the longest lived species of hominin. Almost two million years doing its thing, running around Africa. They also left Africa and spread around the world. We see Homo antecessor in places like Europe, 
Nobody cares about them, so skip over this one. But these guys would turn into Homo heidelbergensis, a species that was ubiquitous throughout the old world, not just Africa, but Europe and Asia. This is the first hominin to have a human-sized brain. They had a command of fire. They were the first big game hunters. Although look at that face. It's still very large, very prognathic. The brow ridge would be the biggest and thickest of all the hominins. Yet, despite those primitive characters, they would have a human-sized brain within the lower limits of human variation, bigger than any Homo erectus. So big brains have evolved but they still retain that prognathic face, and as a result, they don't have a chin. Instead, they have a feature called a simian shelf. Everybody say simian shelf. It's a shelf of bone instead of a chin. If you feel your jaw, you have this buttressing of bone on the outside. Well, they didn't have a chin because their faces were more prognathic, their chin receded, and to buttress or reinforce the jaw, they had a thickening on the inside of the jawbone that monkeys have, that apes have, that Lucy had, that every hominin has. So despite having a human-sized brain, they had a shelf of bone that is ridiculously primitive, and this is something that only Homo sapiens got rid of. A simian shelf is found in every hominin except humans. Heidelbergensis was almost human in many, many respects, except for some of these features of the skull. Now, the Neanderthals would evolve from Heidelbergensis in Europe, and they would basically be Heidelbergensis on steroids. Bigger, stronger, everything about them was ginormous. Instead of making them human ancestors, we're going to relegate them to be an extinct lineage, a side branch, and they would go extinct. How can you tell the difference between you on the left and a Neanderthal? The differences should jump out at you right away. Number one, Neanderthals have a brain size that is larger than the average Homo sapiens. They have this bulge at the back of the skull. Do you remember the name of that bulge? What's the name of that bone? The occipital bone. This is the occipital bun, a bulge of bone at the posterior or dorsal aspect of the Neanderthal skull. What else? Check out the brow ridge. We might have a little bump right above the nasal bones, a lot of testosterone, but not above the orbits. These guys have orbits that are completely wrapped in very thick bone. The brow ridge, another considerable difference between Neanderthals and us. Look at the degree of prognathism, the size of the face, especially the middle of the face. These guys are more prognathic than any human being today. And notice the chin is missing. They do not have a chin. But because their faces are more prognathic, everything slid forward and they have something called a retromolar gap. That more prognathic face draws their teeth forwards, leaving this gap that humans do not have. I wish we had, and our wisdom teeth wouldn't come in all impacted. But a diagnostic characteristic of a Neanderthal jawbone is this retromolar gap. Why is it called retromolar? Retro means the past or behind, behind the molar the last molar, there is this gap. And as I mentioned, there's no chin. The only species that has a chin is Homo sapiens. Every other species, including Neanderthals, have a simian shelf. The simian shelf, this wedge of bone that reinforces the jaw from cracking, wishboning during chewing. So those are some serious differences between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. On the left, there's our big boy, the Neanderthal towering, giant brain, enormous middle face, no chin. Homo sapiens on the right has some very distinctive characteristics that no other hominin has had. No more brow ridge. The widest point of the skull, way up high. Notice this guy has a sunken cheekbone. Now I might ask you this on your quiz. There's a name for this feature, and remember that a hole is called a foramen, but a divot or a little concavity has a name. We call that a fossa. And because this fossa is above the root of the canine tooth, it's called the canine fossa. Everybody say canine fossa. Fossa means depression, that little scoop that we have. We have these dimples on our skull that nobody else has. And that's simply a function of having a less prognathic face. As faces get flatter, things sink in in the mid face. Finally, only Homo sapiens, only humans have a chinny chin chin. 
these are diagnostic features of humans. No Neanderthal has this, no other hominid. Got a couple of assignments where we're gonna play with these ideas. Number one, your usual quiz. 10 questions, 10 minutes, good luck. Second, your final assignment is drawing. I'm gonna ask you to draw a picture of a Neanderthal skull and label it with the differences between them and us using only the features that we just discussed. Do not Google, do not go online and give me some weird esoteric characters. I'm only interested in the ones that we talked about today. You got it? Okay, that's our last little video lab. Love you. Bye.